<laughs> okay, this is Mary Kay back here again with Lisa. Tell us about what might happen due to this big binder that you received from the state about child care requirements for your home daycare. Uh, it's just going to lead to more labeling that we don't need. Um, I know in state mandated class after state mandated class I go to, they make us, they drill into us that parents are not experts, that parents um, are in essence dumb and they need us to tell them everything. And yes, I think that it's very important for the parent and the caregiver to work together, but the caregiver also needs to take into account parental instinct. There are many ways to parent a child that lead to success, and we don't need we don't need to bring more labels and more labels and making parents more fearful and more fearful that there's something wrong with their child. Um, if the parent and the caregiver and the child are all working together, the things that need to be caught are going to be caught. Um, but you create this hysteria of a quality daycare crisis and then people just get nervous and they start wanting more and more mandates. So do you think the government is, is that the appropriate role of the government to, to tell um, the parents how they should parent their, their babies? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The parent should be um, the ultimate authority in the way their child is raised. Um, I'm, that's a constitutional right, is it not? <laughs> so, um, you know, of course, if, if abuse is prevalent, that needs to be handled. But there are many ways to raise your child, and parents need to have that authority. And when you're putting them when you're putting mandates on birth to, to five daycares, you're taking more and more of that control away from parents. Um, I know in my own home daycare there's a rule um, for infant sleeping that if we want to swaddle a newborn baby, we have to have a commercially made swaddler that the parents have to buy and they have to have a note from their doctor saying it's okay to swaddle a baby. I mean. These are the kind of nitpicky little mandates, and it's just going to get worse with quality rated. So do you think we, what do you think we are, are getting for that $50 million? Do you think, is it worth the $50 million, or would you send the $50 million back? Oh, I would send it back in a heartbeat. If it's not going to be used in the classroom, or what the teachers actually need. I mean, has anybody asked the daycare teachers? what it is they need. It's certainly not more standards. Um, so you didn't request this binder to be sent to you? Absolutely not, no. It came. And like I said, quality rated is voluntary right now, but um, it's it's becoming mandated. This, this uh, quality rated program is not unique to Georgia. It's called different things in different states, but it's the same program. And it's mandatory in other states. I'm not, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head which states, but it has become mandatory in some states. And in, in fact, in uh, my last um, quality rated class that I went to, um, the teacher of the class told all of the daycare workers in the room, if your daycare director has signed you up for quality rated, it's because she cares about you and she knows you're capable of doing this. Um, so, you know, they're, they're brainwashing the daycare workers to think that they need this to do their job, and they don't. Do you think it's an appropriate use of taxpayer dollars? this program? No. No, it's not. Um, if we were really interested in quality daycares, we would be investing in smaller ratios, more teachers, um, more um, daycare assistants for people who, uh, you know, need the daycare uh, funds to send their child to daycare so that they can work, you know, for single parents and whatever. Um, we certainly don't need more standards. We know how to do our job. Um, we're trained in it already. So we know what to look for. And the kids really just need to be loved. I agree with you there. Thank you. Thank you.